GamesCon 2019 is in full force in Germany. We've got a ton of stories from it and a bunch more up next on the JRPG Report. Hello friends and welcome back to the JRPG Report Podcast. This is going to be episode 74 and we are going to be talking a whole lot about GamesCon 2019 that descended to Germany and it's actually going on for two more days but we've already had a ton of stuff come out from it. I wasn't really sure what to expect but I don't think it was this. Now, we've got so much to cover. Um, and uh, I dare say we'll even have a few announcements that will leak into next week's podcast as well. As uh, who knows what uh, what else may come out, but that's kind of um, let's just get right into it. Um, again, thank you for for tuning in. My name is James Fisher. This is your weekly GRPG Report news podcast. We'll try to cover a ton of stuff, and they always say, you know, in the news business, it's you don't bury the lead. Well. In a week like this, it's actually, I'm not sure what the lead is. So this is my best guess at it, as um, we weren't sure when it was going to be released, but now we know Final Fantasy VIII Remastered will be released on September the 3rd. That's going to be coming out for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. And uh, it's not going to break your bank. It's $19.99. Uh, Square Enix announced all this. I, I'm very happy at that price point. I think most fans would be. Uh, considering a straight port came out um, on the PlayStation Network for 10 bucks, I think. So actually getting an enhanced HD version seems like a pretty good deal for, for $20. Now, here... W- if you don't already know the story, you can look that up. I'd say most of you guys listening to this know, uh, know all about it. So this remastered edition of the game enhances the original adventure with some cool new features. You've got uh, enhanced visuals, several characters, enemies, guardian forces, and objects have been refined to look better than ever before. You have a new battle assist feature. You can activate this booster to max out HP and ATB bars and trigger limit breaks at any time. Now the catch is, you'll lose all your HP when you get hit by a critical attack that gives more damage than your HP or by lethal damage. Now I don't want to deal with those random encounters, but you can turn those off. Want to explore without fear of attack, they say, activate this option to turn off random encounters. Event battles must be done in order to advance the story. I'm not sure how far you would get without uh, <laughs> running into the counters you will die pretty quickly uh, and there is also now a three times speed boost that uh, if you want to quickly get through the battles or get somewhere in a hurry that you can turn on the three times boost as uh, we saw like you could do a two times or a four times boost in a recent uh, Trails of Cold Steel remasters um, the PC version will also receive some additional functions, including all items. Uh, that's a, a, a function you can do all items that possesses all items except for a certain number of uh, key items. You can get all abilities. You can do uh, GF or Guardian Force max levels, max gill, max magic, all limit breaks, or all cards. You can possess the max number of the triple triad cards except for the rare ones. There is a remastered trailer for you guys to check out of course on the facebook page i think i posted that the other day as well as um there is 18 minutes of um kind of a a live stream of a individual playing this um the remastered and uh, you can check check that out it's kind of just showing the um that first uh, dance with uh, Renona and uh, Squall. They've, they've remastered it, shown off. You'll, you'll quickly notice, and I'm not sure how they're going to handle this for the actual release, or this was just happened to be that way, but it's definitely a square with, uh, at least on the, on, the, on the trailer that I've seen, there's definitely a square with black all around it. So I'm not sure 
how this is going to look blown up on a big TV. I would have to imagine, based on that, that it actually doesn't like, you know, support widescreen TV. So I don't, I don't know. We won't know until we get that out. That would be a bit of a bummer to play with some black bars, but this is a PS1 game we're talking about, so it may just be a part of it. But certainly good news. I know a lot of you guys were looking forward to uh, when this one was coming out. You don't have to wait too much longer, just a few more weeks. September 3rd, pick it up on your favorite console or PC and only $19.99. That's certainly a pretty decent price. of. I've talked a little bit about um, my uh, Final Fantasy VIII is a weird game for me. Um, I love Seven; it's what got me, you know, into PlayStation, making that leap from Nintendo. And when Eight was announced, I was at a fever pitch for it. Um, I remembering getting that demo and playing it just to death and I I just felt disappointed I think when the final game came out and now looking back on it it's wedged in between <laughs> you know a couple of my favorites so for me you've got six and seven are, are some of my favorites and nine and ten so it's kind of like I can't help but kind of look a little bit down on eight, but then I've know plenty of you guys out there who think eight is your absolute favorite. Um, for me, it was just a little too different. Um, just not like I didn't like it. I just didn't love it. Um, and but maybe this is a chance to get kind of back into it, and I will definitely check it out. For me personally, I think this is going to be like a. Uh, catching on sale in a few months type of deal i can't see me plopping down the money right away i've got too much else going on at the moment but let's talk about some other things that uh, we knew was going to happen i've got a video linked on the facebook page that there is a uh, 16 minutes of footage for final fantasy 7 remake and this is definitely showing a person like it's kind of over the shoulder showing a guy playing it they live stream this i believe it's in Oh, it's definitely in a different language. I didn't understand it. It's not in English. So I'm not sure what language they were actually speaking. Um, I guess I figured it was German, actually, since it was over in, at GamesCon. It doesn't show a whole lot that we didn't already know, but this is definitely the demo that they're playing. And I, I called this, I wrote it on the Facebook page, we're going to get this demo. Um, I don't know when it's going to come out, but... It seems to me they went to a lot of trouble to make this thing. I dare say it'll be at TGS as well. And I don't know, November-ish they put it out there for the masses to, to get a hold of it to really build up the fever pitch for the March release. But I, I don't see the point of making this demo without it releasing to the public. It just makes a whole lot of sense. Um, it pretty much is the first bombing mission. It shows in a lot of detail about some things that maybe you didn't, haven't seen in detail before. Um, but what I took away from it was the, the video is 16 minutes long. A good, about half of it is the fight against Scorpion Tail. This is not going to be a simple fight. It is going to drag on you know seven eight minutes long and i think that's awesome like it should take a while to defeat bosses they shouldn't just be you know dealt with immediately so check that out if you want to get a better look at it like i said it's just you know somebody filming somebody playing on tv so you're not going to get it in you know max resolution to to really check out and dive into but you can learn a lot from it and it will make you want to play this game even more, but you'll have to wait until March to do it. Um, the other bigger news, but I didn't want to lead with this one because in reality it's not super big news. But we did get a smaller window, so to speak, for the release date for um, Persona 5 Royal. Um, I believe previously it was just listed as... Uh, 
maybe winter 2020 or just no i think it was just 2020 yeah that's right it was just saying 2020 well it has been narrowed down to spring 2020 i think i was in my mind I'm, i was hoping for a winter 2020 release so spring so that means you know late march april or may in my mind it makes sense for this to come out before the end of the fiscal year in april to kind of really you know hit home and drive home some results we'll wait and see exactly what that happens there was a new trailer to go along with that that's at the very end you know saying hey this is, this is definitely coming in the spring get uh, get ready for it the obvious uh time frame that it's definitely not going to come out the first week of march along with final Fantasy VII remake so i think it'll be after that i dare say we'll get news maybe we get a more definite release date at, at tgs i kind of doubt it but we'll check back with that here in the next couple months and see if we can't nail down a uh, a smaller window but spring is still i mean it's better than summer right <laughs> and we'll just have to wait and see uh, when that one actually gets a firm release date now, now we i wasn't expecting that i was expecting a release date perhaps at tgs of, of that but i didn't necessarily see um that type of information but it's certainly um certainly welcome um, another thing we got was and there's going to be a few of these the, less on information more on just there was a new trailer because it's you know it's a game show so there's going to be new trailers uh, we got a new Japanese trailer and a new TV spot for the remaster of Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. And this is actually coming out on September 20th. That's going to be for PC and PlayStation 4. Um, you can check that out if you would like. I've got that linked on the Facebook page. Um, not only am I looking forward to uh, playing this one again at some point, the wife is definitely looking forward to it. It's a game that we both really enjoyed uh, playing through. And the first thing you're probably going to say if you know me is like, but, but James, you, you hate Pokemon, and this wasn't that far a stretch from it. Now, I'll, I'll give you the, a little bit of that, you know, in the monster training and, and fighting for you. I just, I felt like this one was really different. And you still had control of your you know, human that you had to, you had to use him at some times, especially in the later games, you were uh, really using Oliver for his magic quite a bit, but looking forward to that one, you can check those trailers out, uh, we got some new gameplay released for Trials of Mana, also from Gamescom, you can check out, I believe I, I picked up the, uh, the Metsu's trailer to check out, that game is looking really cool. Now this this feed that we're seeing in these videos is from the PlayStation 4 version of the game. I think previous ones they say was from the, from the Switch. So I've yet to kind of really dive into that to see if there's really that much of a difference. We'll have to uh, really dissect that to see a discernible difference or not. Trials of Mana is due out on PS4, Switch, and PC sometime in early. 2020 another game i am looking forward to it's cool like all these games like you know charles of mana or um, tales of uh, vesperia these these really games that i never got to play before you know with charles of mana game that's not been released over here but these going back these really golden years of jrpgs finally getting a chance to play those it's it's pretty cool there was a new presentation, of course, for Dragon Quest Eleven S Echoes of the Elusive Age Definitive Edition. Uh, the, I think it was like a 30-some minute tour video that they put out for it. I've got that linked as well. But we uh, we heard in the uh, past couple of weeks that there was going to be a demo available. Well, get on the eShop now. It is available. You can actually either get the demo and or you can uh, pre-download it, as they say, and purchase that game so when it does come out you will be able to download it and uh, or play it immediately for waiting for it to uh, download 
Western publisher Nintendo also announced that players will be able to download the free Champions Pack downloadable content for the game on launch day to receive additional costumes and helpful items. Very cool stuff. Game will be due out worldwide on September the 27th. Uh, you can check that out now. I've got that linked on the Facebook page, and you can go play the demo. Uh, your data will carry over as well from uh, from your save file into the final game. Uh, game Freak and Nintendo all about uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. The Pokemon Company released new information in video and screenshots about the game, introducing the Battle Stadium, Dynamaxing and Max Moves, and new items and abilities. You can check out those videos on the Facebook page. That's about all I know about it. Um, or And really willing to talk about. Because my love of Pokemon knows no bounds. We had plenty of smaller uh, stories, so to speak, come out from uh, Gamescom as well as around the industry. We learned that uh, Bandai Namco will release a demo for Code Vein for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on September 3rd, the publisher announced. The demo will allow players to create their own characters, explore the start of the game, and dive into the first part of, quote, The Depths, a challenging dungeon that promises to test a player's abilities. Code Vein is due out for PS4, Xbox One, and PC on September the 27th. I'm really happy that this game has gotten a demo. Um, I, my impression of it wasn't great. Um, these last couple trailers have certainly made me feel a little bit better about the game, but I really want to see it, you know, in person and really get a feel for it. I, my initial, when I first saw it, the game looked slow and and not in a good way, if you know what I'm saying. So I really want to play it and kind of get a more of a feel for how the game has progressed. It's been delayed several times, so hopefully they have addressed a few of those issues and can really flesh it out and make it into something. There is those. Dragon Star of Anar, uh, PC will, uh, they'll get on PC on October 9th. The uh, release date's been kind of all over the place, but uh, finally, Publisher Idea Factory International has nailed it down that PC owners via Steam will get it on October 9th. The PC version will include all gameplay and art content from the Japanese release, as well as English, Japanese, and traditional Chinese subtitles. Upon release, users will be able to purchase the Deluxe Bundle, which includes the game and Deluxe Pack, a perm at a permanent 10% discount. The... Uh, so yeah, so all the PS4 owners who've been playing it for a, a while, PC will now be able to do that as well. Uh, kind of lost in the shuffle us into your of Gamescom, we got a new trailer for Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3. Uh, this one is called The Bonds Between Us. It details the bonds between Reen and his new yes, comrades yes. and the new Class 7. Um, He's on me. There's nothing new in this one. It, it does show off a little bit of the Brave Order, Link Attacks, Brave Points, various Arts and Crafts, and the S-Crafts. So nothing really new in this trailer, and I guess they just feel like they had to kind of put something out uh, with its uh, being pushed back to October 22nd in North America and Europe. This is kind of just a placeholder until we get something more. Uh, I'm asking this of each and but it's a pretty cool trailer. You guys can check that out on me. the Facebook page, of, of course. Fight with me um, in our ever popular weekly <laughs> Daily Riza, um news, we um, I'm not. I think this is just going to be for Japan owners that they uh, Koi Tecmo and developer Gust have got a new trailer, and it's featuring the. Uh, Divel's Embrace, D-I-V-E-L-L. -L. That's a new costume for Raza to wear. This is included in the premium box limited edition of the game in Japan. So yeah, I don't think we're going to be getting that one uh, over here. But you can check that trailer out nonetheless. Maybe we'll get something 
exclusive in our premium edition. Tilly Reza Ever Darkness in the Secret Hideout is due out for PS4 and Switch on October 26th in Japan. PS4, Switch, and PC via Steam on October 29th in North America. And November 1st in Europe. And maybe this will be the last... I uh, know. I'm not going to say it. This is not going to be the last story. You know it's not going to be. But the game has gone gold. <laughs> that means development is complete and the game is ready for mass production. Tons of details out there for you guys. Um, they released a screenshot. Uh, assuming it says Japanese, says one of these word or symbols means gold. So, all done with that. And surely next week we'll get some more news that we <laughs> didn't anticipate. But uh, can't wait to hear more about Tele Raza. And I am looking forward to the game. It just it has been a running gag for a while now that we get something new every week with this game. A game I have not talked about in a long time. And uh, I actually produced a short little YouTube video for it. Which uh, was fairly popular still, because there's not a whole there's there's literally nothing out there about this game. That's a turn-based RPG called Mistover. Well, finally it has come out uh, from nowhere's and gotten a release date. Um, they were supposed to be in the summer. That's not happening. But uh, this game will launch on PS4, Switch, and PC via Steam on October 10th. Uh, developer. Craft on Game Union announced the PlayStation 4 version is newly announced because this was supposed to be a Switch game. And it was uh, even when I was calling it uh, a Switch JRPG. So this game is going to come out at $29.99 or uh, 3,000 yen. Um, here's a quick overview of it. In the unexpected appearance of the Vortex, Pillar of Despair unleashed dreadful creatures that brutally raided the world. Defenseless and vulnerable mankind was soon on the verge of extinction. When all hope was lost, a miracle happened, and the creatures suddenly vanished. Desperate to prevent the next invasion, the survivors created a group called the Core. The journeys into the vortex from which the feature creatures emerged. You will lead the Corp to reveal the secrets behind the incidents. They ask, will the human race succeed in changing the course of their destiny? In the midst of Vortex, Pillar of Despair, you will be constantly dealing with the internal conflicts between satisfaction and greed. Limited visibilities will hinder your exploration. You can utilize skills and create effective formations to achieve victory. Don't forget, even your best crew members only have one life. And that upgrading gear is not the only way to win. These are the key features of the game. It contains 40 hours of expeditions with five distinct regions. It's a turn-based RPG with a twist. It can change based on your actions. Maps are ever-changing. Practice different strategies in order to survive. Building, build an invincible core by combining and strategizing with strategizing. <laughs> That's the <laughs> pronunciation I'm looking for. With eight different core classes. Learn new skills and upgrade equipment to enhance core mem crew members. The mist influences everything that happens in the game. Your strategy will reshape the fate of mankind. So they did not release a new trailer for it. The, the trailer that was accompanying this story was from back at uh, PAX East in uh, March. But getting a firm release date for this game is very cool. It's a game I've been looking forward to. And uh, now I get to choose whether I want to play it on <laughs> Switch or uh or ps4 but <clears throat> we're looking forward to that one hope you are too let's talk one more story and that has been uh that was my lead for the past two weeks was talking about grandia hd remaster well the news that i have is that the pc version will launch in september according to a newly launched steam page uh, the remastered version of Grandia 2 has been available for Steam as uh, Grandia 2 Internet Anniversary Edition since August of 2015. Now, by now, it will actually be called Grandia 2 HD Remaster. Also, back on August 16th, Grandia HD Collection, which includes both of them, launched back on Nintendo eShop. 
So, don't have a... Seems kind of odd to say it's going to come out in September. I mean, that's next month. You would certainly think that... Um, you would think that they would have a little firmer, firmer grasp on that. There was a, <coughs> a Steam trailer for that. I've got that on the Facebook page. The key features of this one are the enhanced user interface, sprites, and texture art details. The original cinematic videos have been visually enhanced, widescreen support, and customizable resolutions for the PC. You get Steam cards and achievements on PC. You can choose audio in Japanese or English. Um, language supports original English and Japanese plus French and German translations. PC only, you can do gamepad and keyboard support with remappable controls. So PC users will be able to play this one here pretty soon. Um, I was uh, able to download that one. Um, see, it came out on Friday, and I downloaded it when I got home from uh, work and the end of the day, and it took about an hour to download. So I wasn't able to play it Friday night, but I ended up playing it Saturday, and I've been playing it uh, since then. I've got, I don't know, about six or eight hours into Grandia 1. And it's one of those things like, do you ever play like a remaster of this one? Or, you know, you you pick up a, a game on the PSN store and you're like, I'd really like to play this game. And you think you're playing it again. And the more you play of it, you aren't certain if you've played this game before. <laughs> it's, it's so weird because like I remember certain parts of it, or I think I do, but it all still seems new as well. It's a very odd feeling. Like, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I played Grandia 2, Grandia Extreme, and Grandia 3. Grandia 1 would make sense that I actually didn't play it when it came out. So, I'm kind of playing this one, and but it's like, I know these characters and I remember stuff, so at the back of my mind, I think I do, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe I'm playing it as if I never played it before, but I actually did. Um... I'll never know. It's it's really good though. Um, you're you're not gonna fool anybody um, trying to pass this off as some sort of new game. Like uh, the wife came down and was watching it a little bit the uh, the other night and was like, "What are you playing? Like this looks really old." As, and like it's not even to the point of being PS2 quality in terms of visuals it's just a very cleaned up ps1 so the character models and everything don't have the jaggies they're they're a really nice uh, visual style and it looks really good and it plays really good <coughs> it is frustrating at times like especially trying to find um, find your way around the parm in the beginning of the game you can turn the camera all around so it's that early 3D where they're still trying to figure stuff out, but they're doing a whole lot in it. So more times than not, you're going to get turned around and try to find a place in town and you're going to walk out of town because there's not like, there's no, sometimes there's no distinction between going to a new part of town or going back out to the field or or anything so that's going to happen more times than not you're going to end up going back into town to try to figure out where in the world you're going no maps um, dungeons are very similar in that you will spend a lot of time uh, going into dead ends and trying to find your way around they have instead of a map from time to time you will get to a a little blue circle thing and you'll be able to go into it and it'll give you like a uh, I guess I think there's a picture of a bird, so it gives you kind of a quote eagle eye version, which you know you can definitely get a good idea of the map, but you know you may have one of those per section, possibly two. Um, it's old school, so if you're on a ledge and there's an area below, you can totally fall off that ledge and, and have to go back <laughs> from wherever you went to. Um, the battles aren't super challenging, but that's what Grandia's system is all about. Um, if you mess up, you can mess up pretty quickly and die against normal people. But 
if you're on it and you're attacking smartly in order and canceling them out, you can go through and completely cancel out your enemy's attacks. They can do the same to you. So uh, it's it's a great system. Um, I, I can't speak to Grandia 2 yet. I'm not sure how that has held it up, but I'm really enjoying it, and I'm experiencing it almost as if it was brand new. So that's a that's a pretty cool experience on its own. I can't tell you if it's worth forty dollars at this point. I will only be able to judge that when it's all said and done. But so far, I'm happy. Um, Grandi has always been one of my favorite series, so being able to go back and play this one is a uh, is a special treat. But I'll keep you guys posted on it, and um, like I said, we'll have some more more on it. And uh, probably more on GamesCon. We'll check back in next week and see see where where things are at um, as far as that goes. Uh, I do have. Let me grab my paper back here. It was not in front of me. We did have some awesome shout outs this week. Our new like in the JRPG uh, Report Facebook page. Shout out to Rob. And uh, we had two new subscriptions to the JRPG Report YouTube page. You can join them as well. I've got uh, CPK uh, Q. Thank you for subscribing. And uh, Muhammad Ali. Not, as far as I know, not the Muhammad Ali, but um, I would take his subscription as well. That'd be awesome. Thank you. So you guys are, are great. Thanks for uh, liking and subscribing. And if you haven't done so, please do that. Join our communities. That would be really cool. I try to post all the videos that we talk about on here. And then we take those videos, put it over the podcast, and make a uh, YouTube video out of it. It takes a ton of time to do, but it's a lot of fun. So I enjoy doing it. As long as you guys keep enjoying it, I'll keep putting that stuff out there. But that's going to wrap up this episode. That's number 74 of the JRPG Report. My name is James Fisher. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to leave us a review on over on Apple iTunes. Five stars if you would. That would really help push our, uh, push our product out there so more people can enjoy it. Appreciate all your comments and likes on the Facebook page. Head over there and Tell me what you think, and I'll be trying to put it into a future show. Till next time, guys, get back out there and level up.